The bacteria living inside our ponds and especially our filters are essential to maintaining safe water for the fish, keeping the water clean and clear and helping break down waste products. Without these bacteria, our ponds would potentially be overrun with algae and could become unsafe for fish and other critters that call the pond home. If you're unsure how these bacteria function and how you can create the perfect environment for them, I'll put a good overview video down in the description. The main purpose of this video is to talk about how they behave in winter and what we can do to ensure our fish or other pond inhabitants have good water quality throughout the winter months. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and you might like to visit my website ozponds.com. In winter, biological activity slows down and the bacteria that call our ponds home are no exception. They are still very much present, but their ability to break down waste and process nutrients is diminished, as are the microorganisms that also help with the breakdown of organic materials inside the pond. Because of this, it's wise not to have too many demands on the bacteria and the microorganisms during the winter months. During warmer times of year, we might be feeding the fish, their metabolism is fast, and they're producing lots of waste. This is okay as the bacteria and the microorganisms are also in overdrive. You might also notice that in warmer weather, there's less waste build up inside the pond. Again, this is due to the bacteria and microorganisms processing it more efficiently. Now everyone's winter is different and everyone's pond is different, so everyone's bacteria will perform at different efficiency levels. I think a good example of this is that whenever I visit a tropical place, I'm always in awe of the amount of fish and other aquatic life that live inside their rivers and streams, compared to my more temperate climate. The native fish in my streams are quite small, and there tends to be more shrimp and crayfish than actual fish. It seems the cooler the streams and creeks, the less fish they seem to support. And you notice that in really cold climates, the explosion of life doesn't really occur until spring. Therefore, when we're preparing our ponds for winter, or even when we're designing and building them, we should be aware of our climate and how much natural water bodies in our area can handle, and whether or not we will shut down our filters for the winter. We can also be choosing fish that will naturally slow down for the winter if our climate is harsh. Common goldfish and koi are both very popular pond fish, and they're great at slowing their metabolism right down to survive the winter. Often for first time pond keepers, they'll kill their fish with kindness. They notice the fish is sluggish and they try and encourage them to eat. In the cooler temperatures, the fish can't properly digest the food if they eat it. And if they don't, it sinks to the bottom or ends up in the filter. But because the bacteria are also slowing down, this unwanted food can quickly foul the water. And now you can have a real problem because the ammonia levels may start rising as the bacteria aren't active enough to process it as quickly as it's being produced. If this were to happen in warm weather, at least single celled algae will quickly grow to keep the ammonia under control and the water safe for the fish. But unfortunately, even these quick reacting unicelled algae are slowing down for the winter. You might get some string algae, but by the time it starts to grow, it might be too late. So if you are a new pond owner and heading into your first winter, when you notice the fish slowing down, don't force feed them. They won't starve, and if there is some algae, this is good as in colder temperatures, they can more easily digest algae as opposed to the proteins in standard fish foods. The other thing you should do is keep your filter running for as long as you can. Bacteria need oxygen to work, they're magic, and as water moves through the pond and filter system, it's interacting with the air. If you need to completely shut it down because your winters are severe, ensure that the plumbing lines can be completely drained so that nothing cracks over the winter. The bacteria will still survive inside the pond and when the warmer weather returns and you reconnect the filter system, the filter will quickly be recolonized by bacteria. There might be a little algae growth in the spring before the bacteria are back to peak potential, 
but that can also happen in ponds that have been running all winter too. With your pump, you might want to use it to keep a hole in the ice, or you might use an aerator or a de-icer. Now I should mention severe winters are not my specialty, but there's two main things that are important if you experience a severe winter. One, you want to keep a hole in the ice as it allows gas exchange. Remember the bacteria is still working, just at reduced capacity. As waste is processed, gases can build up under the ice, and we don't want this. If your pond isn't under ice for extended periods of time, you don't need to really worry about this. If it's just a night here and a night there, you'll be fine. The other thing is that you don't want to disturb the water right down in the bottom of the pond. In winter, this is where the warmest water is, and it's where the fish will be hanging out. So if you are using a pump or an aerator to maintain a hole in the ice, don't position it in the deepest part of the pond where the fish are hanging out. Another thing you can do is try and limit the amount of debris that falls into the pond over the autumn or fall. This will just mean that there's less waste for the bacteria and microorganisms to process and they can focus more on the fish waste. Previously I used to try and keep my ponds very clean in the lead up to winter, but I actually think that a bit of leaf material inside the pond is a good thing as it provides different food sources for the microorganisms to consume and the fish will be feeding on some of these microorganisms over the winter and into the spring. We also want to encourage a diverse range of bacteria and microorganisms that will survive the winter and proliferate in the spring and the summer. The more we let nature maintain the balance, the easier it is for us and the better it is for the pond and its inhabitants. Remember, there's so many different strains of bacteria and microorganisms that live all over the world. So if you live in an area which has a natural body of water, then you have bacteria and microorganisms that will survive your climate. And given that we live on a planet that is about 70% water, I'm guessing there's natural occurring bacteria and microorganisms near you that have been processing waste and nutrients for who knows how long. Try not to overthink it, don't overreact, be patient, do the basics and let nature do the rest. Spring is coming, so is summer, autumn and another winter. Enjoy the changes that the seasons bring. I hope this video was useful. If it was, I don't mind if you tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.